What is up, everyone? Welcome to another special episode of the Pokemon Podcast. This is the journal Pokemon. I, I don't even know what I named my own thing. The report journal, journal reports. I don't know. This is for Pokemon Go. This is not a normal episode of it, Super Effective. This is one of the little side episodes that I've been doing. This is episode four. I am your host, SBJ. Again, this is not a normal episode of It's Super Effective. Those come out on Monday. We still have one planned for Monday. And speaking of that, I'll just get this out right away. Uh, The reason that there weren't any more special episodes of Pokemon Go over the weekend is because I was in Atlanta and was extremely hot. I will probably say that every time because, boy, was it hot. I was in Atlanta. I met up with WWE superstar Xavier Woods also known as Austin Creed from Up, Up, Down, Down. Uh, If you're unfamiliar with that, uh, Xavier Woods is part of the Tag Team Champions, uh, The New Day. They are the current Tag Team Champions at WWE. I met up with him on Monday. We spent a good six, seven hours together. And during that time, I, I interviewed him for the podcast, which if you're hearing this now, the YouTube version of that should be up. On our YouTube page, youtube.com slash PKMNCast. Originally, I went down to interview him for It's Super Effective specifically, but we had cameras, and while I was setting up all the audio equipment, I looked over to my friend Alex, who brought a bunch of video equipment because we wanted to. Do, we were shooting video for Pokemon Go afterwards. I looked over at him, and I was like, well, we have the cameras here. Why don't we just set something up real quick? And, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The only thing that mattered at the time to me was capturing the audio for the podcast. And so he set up some cameras and we recorded and I cut and edited those this morning and put them together. And I am really excited for you guys to see it. If if you're not into uh, watching two people talk back and forth and laugh, totally cool. But for those of you that are, our YouTube channel is not the bread and butter of It's Super Effective. It's iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher and SoundCloud and wherever you get the podcast. That's that's what we're here for. That's like our biggest draw is the weekly show. But our YouTube uh, it does exist. There are our episodes are on there for just for exposure to just another way to wrangle people in. Uh, this is uh, me sitting in Austin's house. And us talking back and forth and laughing and talking about Pokemon. And we we talked about video games. We talked about uh, him being a black person in the video game community and how that affects. We talked about some wrestling stuff. We talked about Pokemon. We talked about a bunch of stuff. And so I'm really excited for you guys to check that out. I know if you're not a wrestling fan, it might not seem appealing. But it, it was probably one of the best, if not the best, interview I've ever had. I mean... I could be biased because, like, he is a huge hero to me, and he's somebody I look up to not only as, like, a a personality on TV, but just as, like, somebody who does so many things and does them well and does what he loves. So I really want you guys to check that out if you haven't. If Again, if the YouTube isn't your thing, that interview will be included in the next episode of It's Super Effective, which is 225. So uh, that will be out on Monday, like always. Let's talk some Pokemon Go, because it's been, at this point now, a full week since the game's been out. It came out in New Zealand and Australia first, then it came out in the United States, then it broke. As of today, it's now in Germany. But let's let's talk some stuff. I I just pulled a couple news articles. I didn't want to go too heavy with news, because I wanted to talk about some some experiences and I, I have a bunch of Pokemon Pokemon Go stories from Atlanta while I was there. So I, I won't I won't spoil all of them. I wanted to save those some for for the normal show, but let's talk about some stuff here. Uh, the the one that kind of broke news today is Pokemon Go is now the biggest mobile game in US history. And this is according to Survey Monkey off their blog. Uh, Shooting straight to the top of the App Store where the day it was released within 24 hours, Pokemon Go beat out Indie Hit Slither IO. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. And Supercell's heavily promoted blockbuster Clash Royale to become the biggest game of 2016, measured by daily active users. And you guys can't see the bar graph here, but 
the top games in order is Slither IO, Clash Royale, Slither IO 2016, Clash Royale 2016, Draw Something. I can't believe people still play that. I remember playing that when it came out in 2012. It was a huge hit where I used to work. Candy, Cr- Candy Crush Saga 2016 and beating all of those is Pokemon Go. Within three days of release, Pokemon Go attracted more users than Twitter and rose to the top of the App Store revenue charts, earning millions of dollars a day for its publisher, Niantic. As of yesterday, Pokemon Go attracted just under 21 million daily active users in the United States, surpassing Candy Crush's saga's rumored peak U.S. smartphone audience of 20 million, making it the biggest mobile game in U.S. history. It's past Twitter... For daily active users, I don't know exactly what that means because I, like, I have two Twitter accounts. I run my personal at Dragging a Lake. I run at Pokemon Podcast. I know a lot of people, if, if they're doing side projects, they have Twitters for those. So it, it probably, obviously Twitter has a ton of people, but maybe their stats are smart enough to know like these are all spam accounts and these are all porn accounts and these are all business accounts and they're not actually people i i'm not sure how that exactly works but at this rate pokemon go on android could surpass google maps as the largest user of alphabet mapping data alphabet is what owns google and niantic and everything under there because google spun off and formed alphabet or however that worked but On the next chart I'm seeing, we have Snapchat number one, Google Maps, slightly below that, Pokemon Go rising, approaching both Snapchat and Google Maps, uh, already surpassed Twitter, which Twitter was on top and surpassed, well, Candy Crush never surpassed it, but it was, you know, it's up there. That's some data for you if you care about that. Pokemon Go is extremely popular. I feel like I cannot refresh my twitter feed without seeing new pokemon go related articles from from different gaming or non-gaming outlets i i was in the gas station by my house this morning and even on their on the local radio or whatever was playing over the speakers they were talking about pokemon go and i was in an uber in atlanta and that radio station was talking about pokemon go and these are these are outlets that normally don't touch on stuff like this but it's hard to avoid that now i i have a ton of experiences i want to talk about in my thoughts but i pulled this article off reddit it is uh off the r slash pokemon go subreddit titled level 22 player giving small tips of advice also important psa at the end it was recently updated. This came out today. 4,593 upvotes. Uh, the Redditor themselves was Colrich. Looks like they are on the Valor team because I see a little Moltres next to their name. Anyways, they in their Reddit post stated like what you get when you level up. For example, you need 10,000 experience to hit level 12. You get 20 Great Balls when you do so. 3 Revives, 10 Super Potion, 3 Raspberries. That was, that's the first time you get Great Balls. When you hit level 15, for example, you get twenty. You need 20,000 XP to get there. 15 Great Balls, 20 Hyper Potions, 10 Raspberries, 10 Revives, 1 Incense, 1 Egg Incubator, 1 Lure Module, 1 Lucky Egg, and, and you start getting Hyper Potions at that point. I'm not going to read all those. If you're, if you're at a level, if you're not at a level, I mean, things unlock, things come. There's a good q and I wanted to go over some of the questions and answers just to, you know, uh, help you guys bone up on your on your Pokemon Go here. First question is, where should I go to find XYZ Pokemon? Uh, the answer is literally any populated area. There are rumors that electric Pokemon spawn near power grids during a storm when the wind is blowing 25, 23 miles an hour when you're walking down a hill. I have found no evidence of supporting this. There are areas where some of more basic Pokemon appear more frequently than others, and I am sure that you might... And I'm sure there might be a couple Pokemon with some crazy Google map algorithms. You can find almost any Pokemon anywhere other than extremely rural areas. I want to add on my experience from Milwaukee. I am seeing a lot of Rattatas, a lot of Weedles, 
and a lot of Pidgeys. Now, I know those are pretty common anywhere, but when I was in Atlanta, it was almost all Zubats and all Drowsies that actually I, I didn't see as many Rattatas or Weedles or Pidgeys as I did in Milwaukee. But again, I saw those five Pokemon I saw in both areas. I just saw way more Zubats and Drowsies in Atlanta. I saw way more Rattatas and Pidgeys here. You know, that's, that's just something. Also in Atlanta, I saw Grimers and Coughing and some other Pokemon. I have yet to see those in Milwaukee, but in Milwaukee on the map, I've seen Jinx. So again, that's some back and forth there in two city, two pretty big cities. Um, that are very far apart. Uh, next question is, should I use Stardust to raise the CP of my Pokemon? Answer from Redditor guy. I don't believe that anyone should be powering up Pokemon below the level of 20 to 25. Your main focus should be on leveling up. As you level up, you will find stronger Pokemon based on the, you'll find stronger base CP Pokemon. And then he puts that everyone will enjoy Playing their game differently, it has been my experience. That is a waste of Stardust to power up something that you will replace. I spent Stardust until I was level 12 to 13. I pumped all my Stardust into a Pokemon. Then I replaced it three levels later. Next question is, should I boost the CP of my Pokemon before or after I evolve it? Answer is, all the information I have found shows this doesn't matter. A Pokemon will still max out at a certain CP level based off your own trainer level. Next question, when you take a gym, how long before you're able to claim your gym rewards? Answer, you can collect your rewards immediately. You can do this through the shop menu. There is a shield icon represent, representing the amount of Pokemon you have holding at gyms. Gyms will reward you 10 gold and 500 Stardust for each Pokemon controlling a gym, max of 10. You can collect this reward every 21 hours. I normally collect at night, right after I am done for the day. Next question, does incense stack with lure module? Answer, yes. Lure module, if you don't know what that does, I, I, I am aware, I also say lure funny. Everyone in, that, that was just me, that was not in the answer. Uh, everyone in the able, area is able to see Pokemon spawn at the lure module. Incense, only the player that activated incense will be able to see the Pokemon. Again, they do combine Question, what is the fastest way to level up? Answer, the most common method is getting the most out of your lucky eggs to do this. Save your Pidgeys, your Rattatas, your Weedles, your Caterpie, etc. Any common Pokemon costing between 12 to 25 candy to evolve. Use your lucky egg right before your eggs are about to hatch. While your lucky egg is active, evolve all the Pokemon you can. Do not evolve Pidgeotos into Pidgeots unless you need them for battling Use the remaining time to capture all the Pokemon you see and hit up as many Pokestops as you pass by. Double experience applies to everything I just listed. Also, if you're able to do so, try to attack some gyms. The reason you don't want to evolve Pidgeotos into Pidgeots is four Pidgeys will cost you 48 candies, which is uh, 2,000 experience per Pidgey. Uh, Pidgeotto will cost you... 50 candies and that's 500 experience so there you go that's kind of some math for you question my bag keeps getting full and i am running out of pokeballs what to do answer delete your extra potions revive and raspberries you don't need 90 of them ever at level 20 you will have three different types of potions and pokeballs i never I never needed to keep more than 60 total potions and 40 revives on me. I delete the excess. The room I kept for Pokeballs. After level 20, you will start having CP56 Pidgeys that escape Pokeballs and running frequently. You'll need a large surplus of Pokeballs. And then uh, he, uh, this Redditor listed some PSAs. I'm going to read those too because I do agree with almost all of them. So I'm going to read through. Hopefully so far that this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, I know that I'm going to stop and say that anyone who believes that Niantic didn't do a good job of explaining Pokemon Go or, or showing us everything that it can do, while that can be frust frustrating, I actually am glad that they didn't do it. I liked that everyone kind of started coming together to help 
try to find and solve and work out the game. Now, Niantic had a support article, a support section on their website. I read that uh, one or two journal episodes ago, and it did answer a lot of pretty simple questions. And my experience is just meeting people in the community and talking with them and asking how they did this or they knew how to do this. I am so glad that that happened. And if, if you haven't done that or maybe that experience wasn't there for you, I could understand being frustrated that Niantic didn't explain stuff. But since I was out and about and since I was so excited for the game and I was, I've talked to so many people about it, uh, it was really cool just kind of learning with everyone and especially reading threads on Reddit or wherever and like kind of learning new stuff every day. I think it's really exciting and it, it just kind of helps hold and, and even build more excitement for the game. But here, let me, let me touch on these PSAs. First one is, if, you're, if your local park, cemetery, etc. closes at a certain time, leave! People not knowing when to call it quits will create a huge problem for the rest of the players. Police shouldn't have to feel like they're wrangling cats to get people out of a location. If you are at a restaurant slash bar with a pokey stop, please... Be aware that you're sitting on somebody's livelihood. It is okay to sit around, and I'm sure they won't mind. But if you're going to stay at a table for long, after you finish your meal, please give them a good tip. You are taking up space for them to seat another guest. He had some other PSAs on there. So, again, you know, just be considerate. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't play Pokemon and Pokemon Go and drive. Today, when I was... So today I, I decided to just go for a small walk. I was waiting for, I was actually waiting for my YouTube video to upload. It said about an hour and a half and I was like, well, I can pop an egg. I can, uh, I can evolve these Pokemon. And then I might as well walk the rest of the time, which was like 20 minutes and hit up a couple Pokestops and check on the gym that I captured down the street. I live pretty close to a cemetery slash church area. I started walking, catching Pokemon, hitting up the Pokestops, and I saw that the gym that I captured last night was was taken over. And it was funny because there was a car parked on the side of the road exactly where I parked on the side of the road the other day to take over this gym. So as I'm walking closer, I'm not in range of the gym, and, and the gym then turns white. And it was white for several seconds, so at that point I just put a Pokemon there. Uh, because I could tell that the guys in the car were trying to figure out which Pokemon to leave there. So I put, I put a Pokemon there and then kept walking. I figured that they would take it out right away. But I just, I just kind of wanted to be like, hey, like there are other people in the area. Which, which I don't know. I could have went up to their car. But I'm, I'm pr- I was pretty confident at that point they weren't on blue team. Because they, there was blue already there and they were taking it out. So I'm on team Mystic, by the way. So I, I, I turned left and started walking towards the park to hit up two more Pokestops. And while I was there, I could see a car off to the side of the road. Two people get out looking at their iPhones. I was like, okay, they're clearly playing Pokemon Go. And then as I hit the Pokestops and turned around, another car pulled up and I could see him in his car playing Pokemon Go. And that, that feeling is so, it's still surreal. It's so weird but awesome to see people playing Pokemon Go just everywhere. And and as earlier, I talked about how it was more downloaded, being more played than Candy Crush and everything like that. But it's still crazy to think of that this game has made such an impact. And I've spoken before on older episodes that if if this wasn't, Pokemon based, it probably wouldn't be that good. I mean, if you take away the Pokemon, no one would act, no one would really care as much as they care now. But it is it is Pokemon, and somehow it is Pokemon, and that is more than enough to gravitate people and make people excited and get people who normally don't follow or care about Pokemon back in, and it has just been awesome to see a little overwhelming and a little kind of weird that uh news sites and media are just gravitating for you know their clickbait and everything but that i mean that's to be expected of 
of anything popular. But yeah, a, a story that I had when I was out with Austin, or Xavier, I'm going to call him Austin be, because we're, I'm not really talking about the WWE character. Austin and I and my friend Alex, we went to Atlantic Station, which is in some part of Atlanta. I don't really know the area that well, but if you're from the area, I'm sure you know where that is. So we went to Atlantic Station. To There was quite a bit of Pokestops there. And uh, we are just walking, and there was a Charmander there and, and a Growlithe there. So like new Pokemon pretty much for all of us. And so we're, we're getting those. We're getting excited. And um, there was a group about three people, and you could tell they were playing Pokemon Go. You could just tell by their how they're looking at their phone and everything. And, and Austin was like, oh, those guys are playing Pokemon Go. L- l- let's go see what team they're on and everything. And he just bolts after them. And it was, it was really funny. And he went up to him and he started talking. And we're all, and Alex and I catch up. And at the same time we get there, another group of three people get there. And so now there's nine of us. And we're all talking about Pokemon Go. We're all discussing the teams we're on and what Pokemon we're ca- we caught and what Pokemon we're looking for. And then another group of three people came over. So now it's just like this group of us just all in the center of Atlantic Station playing Pokemon Go, talking and everything. And, and Austin was, was cool enough to like tell everyone I ran a Pokemon podcast and how great it was. And it was, it was super flattering. And, and that experience right there of just meeting all these strangers, all playing the same game, all doing the same thing, and just connecting is... Somebody could say Pokemon Go isn't good, and people could agree or not agree with it, but Pokemon Go made that situation happen for me and my friends, and that is like a moment that I would never get probably with another game. And that is a moment that's probably going to stick with me for a a, a long time. Like that was so cool to have happen. And it, it happens over and over. There was several hours later, there was another instance where just a group of us got together while we were out in Centennial Park or while we were in a different part of Atlanta or even at the airport where I when I was traveling I saw other people playing and like just saying hey like what are you looking for there's just really cool experiences and you can say that oh, Pokemon Go is so simple and you know if it wasn't Pokemon it wouldn't be good but it is Pokemon and it is good and it is creating moments like that and it that alone makes me so excited to pick it up again, so excited to go for a walk, so excited this weekend to plan a trip downtown Milwaukee, which I never go because there's nothing really down there for me, but like I can go now, like I'm excited to go down there to go for a walk, to hit up the Pokestops, because I know that I'm going to see other players playing Pokemon Go, and I'm going to be able to connect and have that connection again. And you know, as Pokemon gets old, as Pokemon Go gets older, there might be less and less people playing. But like, and and those encounters might be fewer or farther between. But that doesn't make those encounters any less special if they were not as often. And so, I'm still very happy with Pokemon Go. I'm very happy with everything up to this point. I am extremely happy with with the footage. And the interview that I did with Austin Creed from Up Up Down Down, I I'm it's it's hard to put into words without I don't have anyone here to to bounce off of stuff. But uh, when I record the when I finish putting together episode two twenty five for you guys, the next episode of of ISC, I'm I hope that uh, you guys enjoy it, and I would hope to hear feedback and everything from that too. So. So yeah, I don't know how long I've been rambling for. 26 minutes. Okay, uh I have way I have I have I I have a lot more to say about Pokémon Go, but uh let's take a break here. Uh I will probably do a this will this is episode 4. I'll probably do a fifth episode of the journal. I, journal reports. What I, I don't even know what I called this thing. That's all right. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you haven't done so already, we are like nine reviews away from 600 reviews in iTunes, and every single review helps 
push our show and makes it easier to find for new people and and all that jazz. So if if you can just take one second and review us in iTunes, that would mean everything to me. That would be fantastic. I would love you forever. If you want to support the show even more, though, if you like the sound of my voice, if you like what we're doing, if you like this content, you can actually go, you can actually support us a little bit more than just leaving a review on iTunes. If you just want to leave a review on iTunes, that's, that's more than enough. But if you do like what you're hearing, you want more content, you can head over to patreon.com slash it's super effective and you can support us that way too. We have an amazing Slack community of almost 200 people, exactly 200 people, I'm looking at it right now, 200 people that support the show, donating $1 a month gets you access to our Slack community, and they are the coolest people in the world. They're so nice, they're super open to battling, breeding, trading with you guys, talking about Pokemon Go. I met up with three of, of, my, of the Slack members this weekend in ATL. I, I met up with Drew, who's somebody I played Destiny with for the longest time. Finally got to meet him. I met up with Jack and his girlfriend. They were both lovely and awesome. I met up with Kevin, and he was great, and we went to the World of Coke together, and it was just fantastic. And those experiences were just fantastic. And honestly, if, if Pokemon Go didn't come out the week it did, and I didn't make trips to Atlanta, I probably wouldn't have met them, but... and. Well, I mean, I'm sure I would have eventually met them, but like to hang out with them this weekend was just an unreal experience, and it was awesome. So again, if you want to support the show and join our Slack community, you're more than welcome to patreon.com slash it's super effective. Otherwise, hopefully you are enjoying these episodes. I will probably be back tomorrow night with another journal episode, and then look forward to our our podcast on Monday. It should actually be a longer podcast, too, because I know the... The interview that I did with Austin was was 52 minutes, I think. So plus probably Will and Travis and what we're going to be talking about. So look forward to that. Otherwise, thank you all for listening. This has been another episode of the Pokemon Podcast. And we are super effective. <laughs> <laughs>